Hey everybody, how's it going? So welcome to lesson number three of our Planet Coaster Realism Top Tips series. Uh, so thank you so much for coming along today, really do appreciate it. In the last episode then, we were talking all about the functionality of plazas and starting to lay those down and starting to make those look a little bit real by decorating them. And so in this episode, we're going to be taking those plazas again and adding the level of decoration that you'd expect to find in a realistic plaza. And we'll also talk about the paths that you can use to join those plazas together as well. So I wanted to strip out that content from the previous episode because we were talking about functionality last time and now it's time to start making it look pretty so just like the last one then there's going to be two levels there's going to be basic and there's going to be pro but this time what I want to do is the basic stuff is not going to contain any kind of theme makers toolkit items uh, so that those that are new to the game or the console players can still get the best out of their plazas and then for the pro tips we'll start to add the theme makers toolkits and really start to bring it to life so let's crack on all right then, so we're back at the plaza area that we left at the end of the last episode. Um, and so we're going to go through the basic techniques then of actually kitting out and decorating your plaza. So there's a few things that have changed since the last episode. Nothing major, nothing new in terms of techniques or anything that you may have missed. All I've done is I've just bricked across the entire plaza. I've just put some fences down to mark out the, the queue lines. Um, and I've also just repeat, repeated the flower bed example that we did in the last episode just along here. The only difference is that I'm using the in-game flower bed dirt instead of the mulch from the theme makers toolkit. That's the only difference that, that we've got here. So we need to start kitting out this plaza we need to put loads of services and things that you'd expect to find in this area right so uh, it's already looking like a plaza you can already see that the brick being consistent across everything with the fence and everything just is perfect in terms of how you can lay things out so this is what I was saying about no longer being tied to the round pad that you get given with the rides in this area if you really wanted to take the ride to the next level you could put a ride operator booth you could put some kind of scenery triggered objects whatever you wanted in here and you can actually make it look like it's all part of the right area you're not physically tied uh, like you would be if you had the fencing on for example uh, so if I go that one so if you had the fencing on so we need in this area then quite a few services and the game luckily gives us the ability to do those the first thing we need is a bench or two uh, so it's up to you which ones you choose uh, I prefer to use either the vintage bench or the western bench I just that's my preference but you can use any of them choose it to match your match the theme so you need to place these in areas where the game is going to pretty much allow you and where you'd also expect to find them you tend to find them sort of towards the edge of a path right so that's what we are going to do but remember though that the game is actually going to try and place a bench at the end of paths so remember that we're trying to hide some path misdemeanors and some really weird path shaping underneath all of this plaza uh, so the game will try and make you put um, benches and everything in places so you just need to be a bit creative with where you're placing your benches uh, so for example uh, like you can see it's a bit struggling a little bit here uh, but if I go here it's gonna let me uh, and then likewise along here as well so I know that I've got no path that's living here because my path comes around this way look uh, so this area I might leave blank and put some kind of decoration in or something else in or, or I might leave it open because it's a plaza right you don't want to bog it down too much uh, so I'm just going to carry on placing these around here and place this here and here so you continue placing your benches until you're happy and remember that you can place benches off the edge of the path if that's what you want to do so if I wanted to make a feature of this bit in the middle I absolutely can like it will let me do that actually I'm going to <laughs> because I can uh, there we go no let's just leave it as two <laughs> there we go um, okay so the next thing we're going to need then are picnic benches so you'll see these quite often around us as a bit of a space filler so we need to choose our, our location correctly so um, you would in theory put them up here where you have some space um, so let's go ahead and do that we want to fill this fill this gap in right so let's go a picnic bench here remember to rotate these by the way as you're placing them down because randomness in nature is essentially the key to realism um, I'm just going to place that number and don't forget they're also going to need umbrellas as well so you've got the umbrellas and within the game itself you can choose the options for align to surface and position snap and what that does is it's it's sets it directly in the middle of the picnic bench so you haven't got to fiddle about and make it align so uh, I'm just going to place one there and then remember to rotate them 
but randomize your rotation. Don't always do it in a clockwise fashion because your pattern will become apparent. Um, so rotate one, maybe anti-clockwise, one clockwise, clockwise again, and anti-clockwise. Depends on the view, by the way, as to whether you decide whether that's clockwise or anti-clockwise. Um, so yeah, you can place those. And remember as well that you're going to need picnic benches or something like that down by your restaurant. So we might put some outside the front. And re remembering as well that we're not decorating our restaurant. Uh, so ignore the fact that it's an open building. You would decorate this in real life. And then you do the same. Do the same. Rotate. Rotate slightly. Rotate slightly like that so now we've just got our picnic benches outside next thing we need then obviously bins our guests are going to, going to be messy so you, again you can choose any of the bins um that you like i'm going to choose the studios bin for this one um but for a technique that i'm going to show you later uh, but you can also use the western rustic for the same effect or if you prefer you can actually use one of the themed bins i mean I, I use the park bin here quite a lot and i use the round metal bin quite a lot um they're just they're just as good so i'm just going to choose a couple of bins like this your guests are going to be messy and the good thing with bins because they don't rotate with where the path is you can sort of make it fit in an area a little bit better than you can do benches um so place it down and of course you're going to want, oh I've already placed one, uh, of course you're going to want to place your bins where there is some kind of footfall and some kind of traffic. And just like the benches, you can also place the bins off the edge of the path as well if, if, if you like. So we can put that, put that there. So the next thing then I do, lamps. So the area is going to need some kind of light. Uh, so you can choose your, choose your light. Now the beauty of this is because we are um, off grid, with lamps, you can now start to really hide the fact that we're not actually putting paths everywhere that you see a plaza. Uh, so like, for example, against here, and I can now line this up. So what we're doing is we're almost doing a bit of smoke and mirrors effect now to make it really believable that we're not um, attached to a path. So lamps here, and then one there, and let's go one here and one at the edge of the plaza here that, that'll do for now you get you get the idea uh, so the next thing then that people tend to forget is that there's going to be some kind of sewage and drainage going on in your parks so the studios pack um has a manhole cover that you can use and it's animated right so there it is animated so what you'll need to do is in your plaza work out where you may have some kind of sewage or some kind of water system and then trace it back and place manhole covers along that along that way. Now you want to be placing your manhole covers away from people's feet. So where you've got an area where people are going to be walking a lot, uh, they're going to be treading down the concrete and it's going to damage the concrete and eventually you're going to need to replace the manhole cover or you're going to end up with an accident. I mean, you've seen the YouTube videos of people falling down drains, right? If you haven't, do it after this episode some of them's funny some of them are really quite painful anyway all i'm going to do is i'm just going to place it and because it's animated i just need to come into it and click activate on trigger and it stops it animating because it's not activated to a trigger and now i just need to decide where this drain would actually go so i'm going to say it's going to come from this station and it's going to head towards the restaurant so we would probably have a manhole cover there we would probably have one there, and we're probably going to have one there. So what we've done now is we've, we've, we've given this illusion that there's a pipe that's running underneath the plaza area, and it just brings it to life a little bit. So our guests are in the plaza, and they, we know they're in a part of the park where they're going to need some kind of escape, and they're going to need to know where they're, where they're going, right? So all I've done over here is I've just pulled together some stuff that I can use so we've got an area that we can use for park maps and something we can use for promo posters things like events and uh, annual passes and, and stuff like that so your park map one um, I'm just going to duplicate it's made up of um, the beams that you find inside the roller coaster supports and just a video screen that's all they are there's, there's nothing there's nothing special to them um, but I'm going to place it in an area where I know that I'm going to have a lot of guests so you would place them next to services like this for example um, and then I might put one down at the bottom here like this and maybe if you wanted to go to one more extreme you might place one 
here, for example. There we go. Like that. Uh, so the other one then we've got is our adverts so that we can use for uh, events and, and things. Um, all I'm going to do with this is to copy it. Copy it again so it's on a 90 degree angle. I'm going to select it, group it, and then copy it. And now we just put these in high traffic areas. So I might put one there. And I might put one over here. And I might put one at the entrance and exit of the plaza because everybody's going to be walking past it, right? So uh, perfect location to put it in there. So your rides need signs. Um, and I've just pulled together a really crude ride sign. It's not... It's not very fancy in any way, shape or form, but it's even called ride sign. But your rides need some kind of identifying characteristic, right? They've, they've got names, they've got lives, uh, they've got personalities. So we just place those in like that. And then I'm going to do the same over here as well, like that. Um, and then the last thing that I've done is I've pulled together some kind of vending machine unit as well. So we, we, we would have this idea of filling any space with whatever you can, monetizing whatever you can. So in this instance, we've got two paths that are joining in this way and we've just got this gap in the middle. We know that this area already has enough services, so it's already got game stalls, it's already got grab-and-go units, but it doesn't have vending machines. So I'm just going to use the vending machines just to fill in the gap here. And again, this is by no means pretty. It's by no means glamorous or elegant in, in architecture, but it's just representative of how I how I want this to be. It's like... The idea of monetizing the the area as much as possible and so you can see from this that this plaza is now pretty much how you would expect it to be using just the in-game pieces the rest of the plaza comes to life when you finish your buildings when you finish your games unit when you finish the rides around it the scenery and all of the foliage and everything that would surround this plaza that's when this plaza truly comes to life and everything that you've detailed in here really starts to really starts to pop out so now that we've done the basic, let's swap over and do the pro. Let's add Theme Makers Toolkit. All right then, guys, let's talk Theme Makers Toolkit. So uh, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of items on the workshop. Uh, so I've sort of had to rein it in slightly and just showcase a few. But just to give you an idea of the sorts of things that you can find on the workshop, there's things like vents and AC units. There's things like roller coaster beams and supports there's custom letters that are awesome there's beams which you would expect there's loads of like office clutter and things that you can find and there's loads of area clutter so there's loads and loads and loads of things that you can choose from and if you go onto the workshop you'll pretty much be able to find whatever you want i mean i've got 1500 items in game so i couldn't possibly incorporate all of those in, into into this episode so what i've done is i've gone through and i've chosen my favorites and i'm going to talk through these because you would typically find these in a plaza and i just want to add to what we've already done rather than reinventing things and, and doing it again so where do we even begin so the first reason that i use well first thing the reason that i used the studios bin and have it an open bin is because there are bin covers and these are brilliant you get them in all sorts of sizes and styles and these one this particular one that i love um comes in a, a recycle bin and also a normal bin and i'm sorry i just don't know who did all of all of these i mean you artists out there for theme makers talk it are just incredible you just churn out incredible incredible stuff so anyway so i've got my um i've got my bin and all i'm going to do is i'm going to hide my studios bin with it so, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm just going to turn off a line to surface. Uh, and I just hide my bin. Like that. That's all I do. Um, and then you just go around and finish and do all of the other bins. And of course, these are recolorable. So, if you want to change the actual colour, then you can. So, it can fit into your area. Uh, so like that um, I'm not going to do all of the bins you get the idea so uh, you just can color all of the bins the other awesome thing then that you can use to clutter up your paths and then remember remembering back to this monetization thing where parks will fit as much as they possibly can in wherever they can these awesome drink stalls so if I come onto this back onto the plaza um, I can choose an area and say ah there's going to be people that are going to be walking through here so let me just put a drink store there 
Um, and there's going to be also people that are going to be up in this area. So if you know that the roller coaster you're joining has got a massive queue, you might find a drink stall out the front. All I then do is I just find one of the uh, stunt people from the studios pack, typically the business person, but in this instance I'm going to use Western because we seem to be favouring Western. And then I just sink it into the ground so you can't see the base and then just place it behind and that then becomes a staff member. Uh, there is a, another way that you can do it where you can trick the game into having a staff member standing on the spot. I've, I've seen that used in other parks and it's really effective well, I prefer to do it this way um, purely because you then don't get the notifications of the staff member being happy or not being able to leave the park and, and stuff um, so there he is, he's all he's all happy um, so then you're just still continuing that monetization thing of, of the actual plaza area so the next thing then uh, to talk about would be how to fill in spaces where we know there are no paths with some stuff um, so let's say for example we've got down here I might want to use the cafe tables and then just put in some chairs. And I did this outside the Eurofighter in Raygate Lake. Um, and I also did it there's somewhere else I did it. And it's just to hide the fact that there is no that there is no path there. Um, so if I now just duplicate those, I can just continue to do that. Actually, I'm going to group it so I can, you can just copy it in one go. And of course, if I were taking more time with this and I really wanted it to go for full realism, I wouldn't be just grouping it and duplicating it. I would be placing each chair down individually and making sure that it's slightly rotated and they're in different positions and everything. But this is just demonstration. So you can see now that we're just adding in these, these cafe tables. Um, and so the other bits then we've got uh, in here. So if I come over to the... Uh, Vending machines areas. So we know that we're restricted to how many we can put down and the distance between them, right? So this works in game if you're going for that for that kind of look, but it's not very real. So we need to find a way of filling in these gaps. And it's great because we've got vending machines that are available on the on the workshop and also arcade machines. So this is all I do. We just come in and fill in. And these are recolorable as well, so you can make them any colour you like and just fill in the gaps. And then I might have the shooter, and let's say I'm gonna make that one pink, like that. Uh, and then let's say we're gonna have vending machines. So I'm gonna put the gulpy one next to the gulpy one. <laughs> and, oh, there's another gulpy one. Uh, there are more brands, by the way, there's Pip Shot ones. Um, I think there's a Cosmic Cow one. You get the picture. Um, I'm just going to put that one next to there. And then if you did want to, I don't know if you were doing with a park, dealing with a park that's summer or, or year round, you might be able to put the air hockey table as a games unit. You might put a pinball machine. You might, or you just use the hard wearing machines. But either way, so we're now starting to fill out this area with extra stuff just to, just to bring it alive. And then talking of extra stuff that we're going to be able to fill out with. So over at the gift shop, Obviously, we're not building the gift shop and we're not doing inside the gift shop. But if you were, you've got Theme Maker's Toolkit shelves and clutter that you can use on the shelves and the gifts and plushies and all sorts. Lego sets, Planet Coaster board games, just wealth of stuff. It's quite overwhelming sometimes. But outside the gift shop, you'd have things like postcards. So you, you can clutter up your area using postcard displays, poster displays, just to bring the outside of that. Of that gift shop to life a little bit right uh, and then coming over to the actual ride area so outside the ride you would have things here such as height signs so you might be able to put in what we roller coaster wooden roller coaster different height signs so this would probably be a family one so in this instance you could use this height sign which says that you need to be taller than a meter between a meter and 1.4 you need to have an adult and then above that you yeah you can't come on but like i say there's different ones so this one for example is the is a thrill ride one so you can say you have to be taller than 1.4 meters uh, and then if i swip over to the building tab we then also have actual uh, ride signs so safety signs that have been put together and these work brilliantly um 
they just need a bit of positioning. Uh, so let's go like this. And they come in five five sets, right? So depending on severity of the ride, one being your real tame uh, ride right up to a five. And the colour changes on the board. So it goes from, I think it's yellow to red via green and blue. Um, and it just gives you that, that element of realism. The other thing that I like to do is to include some kind of queue time board. So you would have seen it in, uh, where am I? There we go. Uh, you would have seen it in Raygate Lake where I've put in my own queue time boards. I mean, they're not elegantly designed. I'm no graphic designer. Um, they're just there to, to make it to make it look like it is. But I like to just put it in. And then if I go image and then come down to uh, horizontal weight, 15 minutes, just adds that little bit of extra bit. And you can also have test seats. Uh, so if you're using like B&M coasters or whatever, then you can have a test seat sitting outside the front if that's what you also want to do. I mean, obviously that doesn't match the roller coaster, but you get the idea that you can sort of add that, that, add that sort of stuff in. Um, so you've also got, I'm just going to do another theme maker. So you've also got loads and loads and loads of stuff. So if I wanted to put pay phones in, I can put pay phones in. Um, and I've got the ability to do lettering. So if I wanted to do custom signs for things, then I can. If I want to do signs on the ground, then I can. Um, if I wanted to do clutter and put bins and boxes around, then I can. You know, the Theme Makers Toolkit just gives you all of this brilliant ability to be able to clutter up an area so you just need to be really creative with what you're doing and, and how you're choosing it and obviously when your buildings come to life and you're using theme makers toolkit for that as well that's when everything comes together uh, so you've got the same under building as well where you just have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of items that you can just use to bring your bring your part to life like chalkboard signs and um copyrighted signs that you probably shouldn't show on YouTube and uh, all sorts of just brilliant wonderful wonderful stuff so that's pretty much how you kit out your plaza area using theme maker toolkit and like I say I've just chosen a real narrow selection of stuff just so I can show you how it's put together now let's talk about the path between the plazas so the last thing to talk about in this episode then is all about the paths that connect your plazas together and how we can make those real. And we've already discussed it earlier on to say that it's not just about what you put on the paths that makes something real. It's about how that path interacts with its surroundings and what you put around it that brings it to life. So when you are struggling with your pathways, it might not be the path that's at fault. It might be what's surrounding that path. So here's here's an example. I've deliberately chosen to not have this path in a straight line. Um, I've made it meander its way through and I've just placed a a random roller coaster from another park down. Uh, this just your typical generic for Coma Looper. It's nothing special. Um, but this path is interacting with the roller coaster in some capacity. So what I've got here is the track coming close by the path. So you're creating some kind of excitement around it and some kind of intrigue. And then I've just put the don't die fencing around here as well. So it just sort of fences off that that area. But remember your services along the way as well. So we are we already know that we've got the the bins from the theme makers toolkit or we can use in-game bins. Depends on what you want to do. Uh, so you can place those around. Remember as well that you've got benches. So people are going to need to sit down as you're walking along. So sit down, sit down. Bench, bench, bench. Uh, remember that it's going to need some kind of lighting if you're if you're not doing flood lighting. Uh, so they're going to need some kind of lamps along the way. Let me just turn the align to surface off. Um, and copy this. There we go. And also remember that you've got the manhole covers. So I'm just going to find the one from over here because it's already deactivated with the trigger so remember your manhole cover as well there you go i'm just going to place another one here and for this instance you might say that the services and the drains and everything are running are running along this way so it's it's already starting to come to life but it's still struggling with a bit of realism right it's still it's still struggling with this this idea of coming to life so 
I use this technique quite a lot from, and I stole it from Canada's Wonderland. It's shamefully stolen. Um, but if you use a column, and if you use one of the concrete pillars, one of the concrete columns, uh, you can use the advanced control and then angle snap, bring it down and then give it a color. So again, I tend to use a gray uh, and then take the angle snap off. You can now place it so that it's at the end of the path. And what you're doing now is you're creating a bit of a custom curb. So you're creating the illusion that somebody that's walking along that's chosen to not use a bench to sit down could still sit down um, and then I'm just going to do it this way as well let's just swap this spin this round and the, the reason that I use this column is because it comes in three sizes so if you've got a long straight piece then you can use the eight meter eight meter or you can use the four meter or you can use the two meter if you, if you need a bit more of a finer curve, um, like so. There we go. So I'm just going to do that. Um, so it now gives you a bit of a, a custom curve that's not the in-game ones, but this now also opens up the ability for you to put foliage along the side and flowers and stuff. So I might have a tree. I might have another tree. <laughs> I might put some conifers in because we know we like the we like the conifer effect right so there we go so just add some conifers then i'm going to change the terrain so i'm just going to haphazardly just change the terrain around and remembering that the guest sight line so now you can see that the train has changed ever so slightly but it's not so mental and so in your face that it's obvious I'm then going to just add some terrain paint. Probably a bit too much, but it's the biome the biome that I'm in. Just put some of the grass back. A bit of mud. So I'm just varying it out slightly. Uh, put some more flowers in. Again, I've, I haven't chosen a palette purposely for... For these demonstrations so these flowers and this biome probably don't don't go very well together um but there you go so that gives you a bit more creativity when it comes to pulling together your paths and the bits between plazas and remember as well that you would find some services so you would find potentially the odd grab and go unit that's a single unit you may find stuff like this where you've got uh vending machines along the way because they want to monetize the area between so you can sort of decorate decorate and kit this out you may make more of a feature of this of this curb there may be some things along here that might animate or you might try and hide it and obscure it um so nature is your friend when it comes to your paths in between areas so if i just randomly spam down some trees <laughs> because we like spamming trees, you can see that you can start to create some pretty interesting sight lines just by varying your path and varying this through. And now another um, path lining technique that I absolutely love doing because Alton Towers, it just reminds me of Alton Towers, rocks. So you've got some amazing shaped and sized rocks uh, that you can sink into the ground and you can just line paths. Uh, so... And I'm just, like I say, haphazardly placing these down with without any thought or care. But you can rotate the rocks as well. So you can rotate them through if you want something different. Um, you can rotate it that way. You can do them that way. So they're on full they're on full rotation. So you would just need to take a little bit of care. Oh, my brain can't work that out. Uh, you could just need to do a little bit of care with how you're placing the rocks. But you can now have this varied path end you're not just tied to having the curbs that uh, that the game forces you to have you can start to do all sorts of interesting things at the edge of your at the edge of your paths so I just wanted to bring that into life because I didn't really touch on it in the last episode but I, I think it's important that we 
that we that we do that so guys that brings us to the end of this episode thank you so much for joining me thank you so much for all of your support it really does mean the world uh, i think the next episode is going to be about coaster building um, i'm already part way through recording it so i'm pretty much ready to, to send to send that out so uh, if you want to know when that goes out you know what to do subscribe to the channel as always, leave a comment, leave a like, whatever you like to do. I love chatting to you guys. I love hearing about your success stories. And also, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Um, I will probably at one point do a, a, a questions video, a questions episode where I just answer those questions. So uh, please, please, please ask those questions below. But of course, until we speak again, you know what to do. Please look after yourselves. Please keep safe. Bye bye.